parts of Sweden has been a mining country since at least 13th century, if not older. From the start it was open holes, so-called open pit mines, but soon they started to dig into the mountains and made tunnels. Regardless of what period of time you are looking at, up to a very modern day mining has always been a dangerous job. Always digging deeper into the mountain for the copper, the iron and the gold. My dad's family has been miners in generations. This could have been my own grandfather that started to work in the mines around 1920. I remember so clearly the warnings I got from him about going into the mountain without asking permission from Gruvfrun, that raw creature that we will talk about in this video. If you are interested in her and her sisters, the Sjörå and Skogsrå, and their history, you will find a link in this video's description to my first video in this series. There I talk about how this being probably is a kind of land spirit, Vettir, as it was called in Scandinavia. The word Vettir is a Norse name for all kinds of supernatural things, including the Alfar, Elves, Dvergar, Dwarves, Jötnar, giants, and gods, the Aesir and Vanir. This word lives on in the supernatural beings Vitra and Vette, similar creatures that I will talk about in another video later. But this time, I will talk about Gruvrå. Working in the dark, in the damp and humid tunnels, and always under a threat that a tunnel would cave in or be flooded, of course you wanted something to protect you. Gruvrået was called Gruvfrun, Lady of the Mines, or Bergsrå, Mountain Ruler. Just like her sister Skogsråt, she also got the Noah name Maja, so some called her Gruvmaja. Because just as with a lot of dangerous things, she didn't like to be called by her real name. Gruvrået looks a lot of time like a beautiful woman in fancy clothing, usually in grey or white colour, with a lot of heavy necklaces and rings. Sometimes, when she is warning the miners, she is dressed in black. If you see her like that, get out of the mine immediately, then something horrible will happen, like a flooding or some parts of the mine caving in. She was not always beautiful though. Sometimes she looked like an old troll, or something made out of stone. She also could transform herself into rats, snakes, or bats. Sometimes she has a foxtail, but that is not the most common trait. Mostly this female being was very shy and you didn't see her at all. You could just hear her knockings or see flickering lights down a tunnel where you know no human was going to be at the time. The Gruvrå has a lot of common traits with the Cornwall knockers and German witch line with her knocking, she could lead you to richness, or if you broke the rules, she could punish you. The rules of the mines were simple. You do not whistle, you do not yell, you do not spit or curse, and you behave in a good manner down in the mine. Working in the mines in old times was, as said previously, very dangerous. You needed someone to look after you. So it was important to be polite and show respect towards her, always ask her for permission to enter the mine, follow the rules, and also sometimes leave her a cup of booze. If you did this, she could show you where the rich findings of gold and silver was, but more important, she would protect you and warn you from dangers. Sometimes she could knock on the mountain walls or whisper your name as a warning. Sometimes she put up a light in a part where no living soul was at the time and then the miners, when they saw the light, knew that this was a warning and they could go away from it. If she got angry though, beware. If you disrespected her, she could cause collapse of the mines, she could flood the tunnels or she could make you get lost in the tunnels and never ever find your way to the surface again. There are tales from my grandfather's old mine about a young boy that thought it was a good idea to try and steal her cup of booze. 
Every Saturday before the miners went home for the Sunday rest, they put up a cup of booze for her. This young boy, though, he thought it was um, a bit stupid. He didn't believe in the Gruvro, so he decided to take the booze for himself. Not only did she slap him so he bled, he was lost in the tunnels for hours before finding the others, and he was never really right in his head after that. Apparently the whole experience made him a bit crazy. As mentioned above, she is not always seen as a human. It was much more common for her to be seen in the shape of a snake, a rat or a bat. How you knew it was not a normal animal was uh, usually because it behaved strangely. Gruvfrun was shy, so it was very seldom she actually showed herself for people in her human form. But if a miner did see her and saw her tail and thought she was uh, looking like an ugly, ugly troll, well, he better behave polite about it. Just as with the skogsrå, you better not laugh at the tail, but instead phrase your wording like, Excuse me, ma'am, but uh, I think your petticoat is showing. She would then be grateful for your politeness and might show you a very rich finding of copper, silver or gold. The belief in Gruvro was very common in the northern mining areas of Sweden, especially after the 18th century when the mining took the miners from open pit mines to the mines that had tunnels and led underground, sometimes hundreds of meters below the surface. The belief in the Gruvro has been strong long into our modern days. My own grandfather, that worked in Gustav Adolf's mine around 1920 to 1970, he was dead serious about her existence. He told me about the time when he and a group of co-workers was mining in a new tunnel and he heard knockings and saw a flickering light down at the end of the tunnel. He and the other workers hurried up to safer parts of the mine and got into an argument with the foreman because the foreman said to them to go down there again and continue their work. As they stood there arguing about this, the new tunnel that they just left collapsed. If people have been down there, many would have been hurt. It's not hard to understand why miners had a need for something to protect them. As a miner, you probably get a good gut feeling about the mountain. And the knocking sound could very much be sounds the stones give away when they are about to cave in. To be able to tell your boss that you have seen or heard Gruvfrun could help you to not lose your job when you refuse to go down again because you were getting some kind of gut feeling that a dangerous situation was about to happen. So do I believe in her? Well, I at least believe she has saved many miners' lives through the years, regardless if she is real or not. And I do believe that just to be on the safe side, maybe you should put out a cup of booze next time you are visiting a mine.